You've probably heard of Amazon lending, or maybe you've heard of other fintech companies who help fund Amazon seller growth. Today, we're going to speak to one of the more unique companies out there in this space who have helped sellers 10x their revenue. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. And we have got somebody who I, I don't know nothing about. I don't even know if she's a, a seller, let alone serious uh, or not, but I know she helps serious sellers out there. We've got Donna from 8Fig. How's it going? It's going great. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I would call myself serious too. Yes. Well, that's good. You know, sometimes yeah. people too serious on, on this show. It's 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 a little bit of a problem getting them out of their shell. So I am happy that we don't have to worry about that with you. So a lot of people who come on the show, I know sometimes a little bit about them. You know, like I don't know what we're going to talk about, but, you know, I've I've kind of, you know, met them many times at conferences, hung out. So I know a little bit. And sometimes I'll be like, no, no, don't, don't tell me anymore because, you know, I know you're going to be on the podcast and I want to find out with the rest of the people. But but I don't have to I don't have to do that here because I, I literally know nothing uh, about you guys. So I was like super excited when they introduced uh, you know, the idea of interviewing you on the podcast and also um, Liron Hirschkorn. I just saw, uh, talked to him last week at a conference and, and he had mentioned you guys as well. So I was like, you know what? This is great. You know, I truly 99.9% of this episode will all be probably new to me. So let's just start from the beginning. I always like getting people superhero origin stories. Like, where are you right now? And then like, uh, where were you born and raised? Oh, wow. OK, um, so right now I am sitting in Austin, Texas. But I'm sorry about that. You know, I hope you have air conditioning. Thank you. It is quite hot. (laughs) Um, But I was actually born in Costa Rica and raised in Israel, Latin America and the United States. So how many languages do you speak? I speak three languages. Okay, English, Hebrew, Spanish. Yes. All right. Awesome. Um, I don't know. I was was going to try and be fancy and say (laughs) all three languages in one because I I do speak uh, Spanish, but I don't. speak uh speak hebrew you know what it's actually interesting my very first um amazon conference i ever spoke at maybe mm-hmm. 20 beginning to, or middle of 2018 yeah and speaking speak of the devil liron um i was like it's gonna be asgtg and and um it's in brooklyn so i'm like okay. hey tell me something i can say and so he, he taught me a, a couple of things the first one i forgot the other the other one was like i don't know kind of i don't know if it's really religious or he was like you say Yeshar Koach to, to everybody. And yeah. I, that always just uh, stuck with me. But that was like, uh, that, that was my only uh, thing I've ever uh, said right there on, on board. But I always, or on stage, I always it's try and a, speak different languages on things. But maybe you can teach me one. something else. Well, I could teach you uh, some other ones. Um, definitely, I think there's a good mix of like Hebrew and Yiddish, which is is uh, very handy for someone who's wanting to talk to uh, the selling community over in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, I think they're all speaking the same language, which is the language of selling and growth. And that's what they do best throughout really some of the most tumultuous uh, years, both positively and negatively, um, that e-commerce has experienced. So everything from supply chain disruptions to historically high demand. Um, They've seen it all, done it all. And I'm sure everyone listening right now knows exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, regardless of what language we speak, where we come from, we're all in this Amazon world together. And that's kind of like what the, you know, one of the messages I, I preach here is, yeah. is it's, and which is why I like to get people's background is because you could be somebody who speaks Hebrew, who's from Costa Rica, or <laughs> you could be, you know, you know, some, some American kid born in the USA who's, you know, selling on eBay. And we all have different, you know, struggles, um, you know, in, in e-commerce. But speaking of e-commerce, you know, you told me your, your, a little bit of your journey there. How, yeah. At what point did you get into e-commerce uh, yourself? Yeah. So it's so true, by the way, what you were saying about um, you could be someone from anywhere. And we see that actually with eight fig sellers um, hailing from really every corner of the globe uh, with products that are also originating from every corner of the globe. Mm-hmm. And managing these amazing, awe-inspiring, growing businesses all the time, regardless of their origin story, as you as you phrased it. So, uh, yeah, when it comes to me and e-commerce, actually, my first uh, foray into e-commerce was with 
uh, a store that I had opened a Shopify store probably like a decade ago. But um, mm. when I actually started to do it at scale was actually when I was working for um, an international retailer. And actually over there, what fascinated me most was the whole procurement process, the supply chain operational aspect of the business. Um, because at that point I was doing a lot of marketing and that sort of came naturally to me and doing it for e-commerce was, you know, it's its own roller coaster and treat. But the whole operational aspect of the the planning and forecasting that's such a big part of e-commerce uh, was novel to me and was very, very interesting. And so when the opportunity came to join 8Fig um, a couple of years ago, I immediately saw the potential because I knew the the toll that those operational necessities took on e-commerce businesses, regardless of size. But really, when you're talking about small, medium businesses, which is um, who we're talking about when we when we talk about marketplace sellers, they're actually compounded because you're talking about people who are doing things um, either by themselves or with a very, very small selected team um, managing in in some cases eight figures worth of merchandise and planning and forecasting and, um, and operations and containers and you name it, marketing, obviously in the end. So, um, so, the, so uh, what year were you, were you in, in that bigger company that you were saying in, in the, um, in kind of working on, on the, uh, you know, a little bit of the operation supply chain side, 2016, 2018, those years, so like, like take, take, take around that time, you know, mid, I don't know what you even call that. You know, we say, oh, yeah, I'm a 90s kid. I'm an 80s kid uh, uh, in the mid 2010s, I guess you, you would say. So so yeah. like, you know, supply chain issues in the mid 2010s, which is like literally not even six, seven years ago. Yeah. What is like what would you say is the top three changes in what people, you know, people were dealing with, whether it's good or bad around that time compared to now in 2022? I mean, obviously the pandemic, you know, would be a yeah. top of mind and, and the kind of like a domino effect that's had on on different things. But but other than that, that everybody knows about what, what, what are some things, you know, for somebody who's been in the game like yourself since then? So I love that question, because when I joined 8Fig and, uh, you know, my mandate was basically, all right, take this concept, make it into a product that people can use and people can engage with. And then one of the main, main things um, that mattered there was to inject flexibility into every single one of our user flows. And that flexibility, even before everything that went down in 2021 with like, you know, containers, delays mm -hmm. and, and manufacturing costs, it's not like supply chains were this super reliable clockwork thing that 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 always worked and and never uh, never malfunctioned in the past. So flexibility was sort of a given of if you're going to build a product for e-commerce sellers to grow their store, you have to understand that it's going to be a wild ride. Eventually, you know, you're going to end up with uh, positive unit economics and and phenomenal uh, year over year growth and and all all those all that good stuff. But to get there, it's, it's going to be a bit of a ride. So buckle up and then, uh, make sure that you give them that ability to, um, to make those changes. So if I'm looking at, let's say pre mid 2020 and then post mid 2020 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. supply chains, um, first of all, it, <laughs> I, I can't not mention the the spike in demand that, of course, was facilitated by uh, the pandemic. But it's not like e-commerce was shrinking before the pandemic. It's just sure. it, it accelerated what was already happening. And even now that, uh, you know, according to some sources of media, we're seeing some sort of slowdown in e-commerce. It's still nowhere near the pre-pandemic levels. Like th this is a very, very clearly growing sector of the economy. It's a new way of consumption that that. Um, it's not so new anymore, but I mean, people all over the world have become accustomed to it. There's, there's really no going back. Um, so that's one big difference is, is that demand, uh, and openness to online consumption among, uh, among the end, the end consumer. Another big difference is, um, the playing field itself. So I'm sure every seller would agree with me, especially Amazon sellers. The competitive landscape has changed significantly even before the pandemic. But of course, uh, the pandemic accelerated a lot of things. Uh, you're talking about uh, things that 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 sellers didn't uh, didn't necessarily deal with uh, in the past, whether it's competition coming from other sellers uh, who are you know thinking this is a, a great viable way to make a living. 
um, and whether it's a corporate competition, competition coming from Amazon itself. And I know that we recently heard that that might be something that, um, um, they're, they're stepping away from due to, due to some scrutiny, but the competition level, uh, of let's say the mid tens, mid to late tens versus, uh, the early twenties is, is starkly different. And it requires sellers to be even more focused, even more, uh, dedicated, even more methodical in their planning and forecasting. And then I would say the last uh, big difference is in terms of operationally what is required from sellers in order to excel and really capitalize on all of those opportunities, which is extremely high demand and then uh, more and more competition, which of course means that um, the slice of the pie that you're getting is potentially, um, you know, up, up for grabs. There's, there's more people to sort of battle it out for the top spot. Yeah. You know, you know, out of, out of those things you, you mentioned, you know, I, I think every, I don't think this is just a, a universal thing. This is just my own personal opinion, but, mm -hmm. but the one that, that, that maybe hit me most, cause even, even though I do work at Helium 10, I'll, I also have my own, uh, you know, Amazon uh, business as mm -hmm. well. Um, you know, it wasn't necessarily, you know, like, you know, the price uh, increases uh, of shipping and, and, or inflation or, or, or just, you know, inventory uh, issues, but it was the time that it took for the whole process. You know, like ba back in the day, uh, you know, 2018, 2017, you know, I could place an order, you know, in China, for example, you know, th they'll produce it in like three weeks and it would take like another three weeks and it would be in my warehouse, like literally, you know, maybe even faster sometimes. Th there were times in the last year and a half where it, that's those same six weeks became like five months, uh, four or five months. And those you know, you know, like, like prices is like, Hey, it's not like, Oh, I, I'm getting hit with inflation or I'm getting hit with higher shipping costs. No, that's universal. So like, you know, it doesn't, it's not really going to affect me that much because all right, if I have to raise my prices, well, guess what? Everybody else is getting hit with the same thing. But like you said, you know, like if you run out of stock because you know, you don't plan for five months worth of inventory, it, it has like, you know, sometimes near permanent effects uh, on Amazon. So that was like one of the you know, the, the biggest kind of like, you know, pains for me. Now it's, it's nice to know that, you know, things are, you know, here in the middle of 2022 getting a little bit, you know, better, some maybe, you know, light, um, at the end of the tunnel, but, but, you know, the, we all, we all deal, de deal with issues. And, and that's, you know, for, from what I, I understand about your, your, your companies, you know, you, you help people, um, you know, with some of these, uh, these issues as a, w would it be correct in saying that like eight figures, uh, is what we call a, a FinTech a company. That's a new yeah. word that I learned in my vocabulary last year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a fintech. And actually, as you were talking, I thought that it was worth mentioning. So essentially, mm -hmm. the way that we've um, that we've built Aidfig as a growth platform, um, providing financing for uh, e-commerce sellers, so Amazon, Shopify, uh, all all other platforms, specifically, is uh, based on supply chain operations, and that makes both our funding very, very unique and our remittance operations very unique, but also the product itself. Because when you say that you're a growth platform, the, uh, the main thing that you're trying to drive here for sellers is growth. So we're not in it to, you know, just, all right, hand out, um, capital and then, uh, remit that capital according to, I guess, uh, some sort of predetermined schedule, which starts the day after you receive the capital, because that's going to be ineffective for the vast majority of e-commerce sellers. And that's due to the way that supply chains work, right? You mentioned five months, even in the past six weeks from, uh, initiating an order from your manufacturer until the goods are actually, uh, with you starting to sell. So let's say eight weeks, those are really, really significant. Um, those eight weeks are very significant in preserving your cash flow, make sure, making sure that it's it's healthy and that you're not just uh, remitting funds before even selling one uh, one piece of inventory. So what we did is we created a platform for sellers to first and foremost map out their supply chain, which in other words maps out um, you know how many how many units they're planning to to purchase and then. Um, what their payment structure to their vendors looks like for, for those units. So whether it's, um, you know, the deposit and balance to the manufacturer, uh, the freight to the freight forwarder, 
uh, logistics, if they, they have some sort of 3PL in the United States, typically, you know, uh, we know that they, they have to have it, especially nowadays where you have to be more well-stocked and constantly be initiating shipments into FBA, which can't mm. originate as we know from China, cause that would take too long. And then, uh, finally any marketing expenses. And once that is mapped out, um, we're very good at also creating some sort of initial forecast for sellers to map out um, like an entire year of supply chain operations, which let's call it for the sake of this discussion, tentative, because the idea is, remember, is the flexibility. So any uh, any expense, any planned order uh, in the HVIG system is subject to change. And when we created this feature initially, it was, of course, based on our understanding that supply chains are dynamic, supply chains are, uh, supply chain plans are meant to be broken, um, and delays will happen, and uh, shifts in quantities order w- ordered will happen, um, shifts in uh, the cost of, of different cogs, such as manufacturing and freight, are going to happen. But then something very, very interesting happened in early 2021. So we were seeing those changes happen at unprecedented scale. Sellers dealing with uh, with these delays more than we had ever seen. Sellers dealing with these price spikes more than we had ever seen, impacting everything from their marketing strategy to um, their the quantities that they ordered, meaning how how far ahead they wanted to they wanted to be, and uh, of course how early they were initiating their uh, their supply chain, their production in relation to when they needed to actually replenish the stock. So all of that was happening and it was very, very clear to us months before the whole world started talking about the supply mm-hmm. chain disruption that something very unique is going on. And we, um, you know, obviously we constantly do analyses and, and things like that on our user base and, um, we managed to see that sellers who um, actually were using AIDFIG for the funding and for that flexibility and planning managed to end 2021 with twice as much growth as sellers who weren't using AIDFIG. And that, you know, obviously uh, strengthened our mission even more of we're going to help you grow by any means, whether that's capital, planning, forecasting, analytics on a regular basis, and that flexibility, that all important flexibility of this is this is a plan. It's important to have a plan because these things don't happen overnight. Supply chains can't be uh, always turned around overnight. But once you have a plan, it's easier to pivot that plan and shift it in real time. All right. Now, I know, you know, you, you touched on it a little bit, but but there's some of us who are a little bit slower than others uh, out there, and, and I'll put myself in that in that group. But you know, I I would think you know if, you know fintech might be not be a word that a lot of people know, but but people are kind of familiar with this whole process of you know borrowing money or you know getting you know uh, getting help with uh, you know growing their their Amazon or, or e-commerce business. And I think the the one that people most know about because it's it's always just thrown in front of their face every day, you know, for the last few years is is like getting a loan from Amazon, right? You know, like you you'll get that little that little message and say, "Hey, you know, you qualify for this." And then and then a lot of, you know, some people are like, "Wow, that's pretty cool." But then a lot of people are like, "I don't need $30,000, but if I hit this button, you're going to give me $30,000 and char- charging me from day one. I was like, you know, some people still do it. For some people, that still works, you know. Now, after that, there are other companies that, that popped up here or there and, and great companies, you know, companies that I've worked mm-hmm. with, you know, in, in the mm-hmm. in the industry where it was similar to, to what Amazon offers in that they're just like, they take a look at your sales in, in your Seller Central or, yeah. or your Walmart account or your Shopify account mm-hmm. and your sales velocity. And they're like, hey, you qualify for, for this amount and, but you don't need this whole amount. You know, you let us know how much you need. That's yeah. what you take out. And then you're not paying, you know, interest and stuff un- until, until you actually take that, that, that money out, um, you know, yeah. uh, apart from, you know, the whole amount that you're owing. So there's another aspect I think that a lot of people are, are familiar with. Now you mentioned yourself, you know, eight fig is kind of different uh, a little yeah. bit in how you guys are set up. So how are you different than these other two things that I think a lot of sellers, you know, know the process on? Yeah. So I think there are some key ways in which we're different, which uh, are great to emphasize here. First of all, you mentioned the word qualify, qualify for several times. Um, And that's something that we're actually very, very proud to not partake in. Sellers know best. 
That is the working assumption for every single thing that 8fig builds. Um, every single feature, every single down to the newsletters that we send. We are never going to assume that we know better than sellers how much is it's going to take for them to grow. So when a seller is building their supply chain plan on the 8fig platform, there are never uh, limits uh, thrown at them, you know, this is, this is not something that you're going to qualify for. This is too much, et cetera. We will try to advise if the plan is submitted and then, um, there's some, some sort of mismatch between the seller's forecast and our forecast. But, you know, we've been known to be convinced by sellers who, uh, you know, are, uh, uh, are, are showing demonstrably that, that they can grow three X in the amount of units that they're selling or something like that. Um, so, that's a, a big key difference of the seller is in the driver's seat. You are going to tell us what your plans are. We're just here to validate them and support you on, on this growth journey. Another way in which 8FIG is, uh, is very, very different is, of course, the, the actual way in which the capital is both dispersed and remitted. So the disbursement of capital happens essentially in conjunction to the need. So you said, I don't need $30,000, but they're being offered to me. That's pretty compelling. That's hard to say no to, right? But if you're the one in the driver's seat and you're determining how much, when, um, then you're able to really make the capital work efficiently for you because you're, you know that you're using it for uh, what you actually need. And then disbursements have been completely separated from remittances at 8FIG. And this is, again, to preserve that cash flow, meaning you're going to get the capital as you need it um, constantly, and, and that's going to be there for you when you need it if you actually need to pay more for a freight and, uh, or double the amount of units. Whatever it is, we got you. You can do all of that um, in your account. No, you know, no call to customer service needed. But then the remittances are actually only going to start once you're actually selling the goods, right? Because before you're selling even one unit, any remittance is actually coming from, uh, from a batch that 8FIG didn't even help fund. And that's what you get when you're, uh, when you're taking a loan from, let's say, Amazon Lending, which... Uh, like I said, good product. They have, they definitely have the the home the home game advantage uh, of you know being there and 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 popping up the message whenever you need. But ultimately, if you're unable to remit according to the original schedule that you signed on with Amazon, and again that schedule is by definition ineffective because they're starting to remit on something that you just received, probably didn't even use, then there could be repercussions for your store. We've seen it hundreds of times. Um, sellers um, getting their store suspended or um, their their payouts withhold. Um, so all of that is not going to happen when you know you have the advantage of the third advantage, which is that flexibility. Um, if you're selling through slower than you imagined, then obviously your remittances are also going to slow down. If you're not uh, selling because your your goods are stuck in the port for six weeks. Again, all real life examples. You're not going to remit for those six weeks, and that's not going to impact your cost of capital, which is that's probably the most significant part of you have a set cost of capital for um, the plan that you've chosen to take, and then whatever happens, which is uh, normal things that happen in supply chains all the time, like delays or uh, selling through slower things like that you're not going to then uh, be quote unquote punished for it by having to pay more. It's just a normal, that's, that's showbiz, you know? That's okay. Economy. So then, you know, here, here's, you know, to me, this might, or to you, maybe this is a dumb question, but I'm just, you know, I'm listening through this here, you know, I, I, some, so, some certain things you, you, you've mentioned. So does this mean like, for example, the, the, mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, I, you know, the loans, I guess, if we're going to call it that, or, or the, the, the money that I am uh, borrowing, um, is it tied to like specific, like, like, uh, purchases like, like, uh, and, and tied to just the supply chain? Like, Hey, I show you guys, Hey, this is my PO to the, uh, you know, my, my supplier. And then mm -hmm. here's the, the invoice for what the shipping is going to cost. And then it's kind of like tied to that. And then you guys are, you're kind of monitoring, 
you know, okay, well, hey, we know that it got held up in in the port or we know that it's not selling yet on Amazon or, or how, how do you guys tie all these things uh, together? Um, yeah, so it's pretty much as you mentioned, we tie them all together using something that we call at 8fig lines. And lines are essentially one line is one order from your manufacturer. So all of the supply chain stages associated with that one order, uh, let's say 5,000 units of uh, coffee beans that uh, with production being initiated in July and then sell through starting, let's say, November. Okay, let's say a, a, a Q4 batch. Um, all of the supplier payments that happen in the middle are associated with that batch. And then uh, the sell through for that batch is going to start uh, sometime in November, which is then going to um, the the remittances are going to be tied to that. The the one thing that you did mention is uh, having uh, to constantly feed your account with POs and uh and invoices, that's not uh, how 8FIG works. Uh, okay. the, the the planning part is sort of a one-time thing. And then as the seller needs, they can uh, perform adjustments to their plan. Um, again, that's done via the account. Usually takes a couple of minutes. And it's a great uh, source of reassurance for sellers that they can always, um, you know, log into their account, adjust whatever they need. So at least from the financial perspective, they're good to go. And now they got to deal with whatever crisis, you know, is happening, like getting the goods out of the port, <laughs> releasing them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, or, you know, uh, playing with their marketing strategy in order to ensure that the sell through picks back up. So all of those things are meant to actually take things off of the seller's plate so that they can focus on selling so that they're not constantly preoccupied with, how am I going to preserve my cash flow? And how am I going to um, avoid going out of stock? Because that's what really needs their attention right now. Not, not you know, how am I going to manage this relationship and and uh, and ensure that I have enough money to to sell? Okay. Now you know. So you've been explaining it quite well, but you know, for sometimes mm -hmm. the best way to understand is is like real life examples you know for for, yeah. for our listeners out there so you know i, I know amazon sellers are are the are, are more secret than the than the cia as far as all oh, this is my <laughs> products you know i'm not saying hey you have to tell me exactly what products it were but sure. but what are some or the names of people but what are some real life examples like hey this this seller here's the position they were in they came to us we had this conversation they 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 wanted to order this much of product it took this long and the you know, throughout this whole process, we were able to take them from from A to B. You know, like if you can give us maybe one or two real life examples to 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 that, hopefully some of our listeners can relate to, and then they can kind of more visualize this this whole thing a little bit better. Absolutely, and I will say if you go to our website eightfig.co, um, there is a, a a category called seller stories right at the top, and you can see lots of real world examples, real numbers, nothing omitted, nothing hidden. So you can actually see what our cost of capital looks like, um, and then uh, examples in most cases of actually changes that had to be made for the seller to experience that explosive growth. So the road to growth, the road to eight figures is almost always paved with uh, not just continuous capital, which is what eight fig provides, but actually a lot of pivoting, a lot of changes. And that's that's perfectly fine and expected uh, in terms of some examples. Uh, there's a couple that I that comes to mind because I think they they embody this very well in I think they joined eight fig January 2021. And by April, which is when they expected their first shipment to come in, uh, it ended up held up in the LA port for, gosh, at least six weeks, at least six weeks. They went out of stock. It was just, it was a disaster. Um, it wasn't a seasonal product, but, you know, just going out of stock obviously is very detrimental. And just their, their whole plan blew up in their face. So, um, once they performed the change request and uh, that, that again, took a couple of minutes, they were able to focus on releasing the goods, um, getting replenished, but that shifted their mindset completely. And uh, I remember one of their biggest takeaways was this cannot happen in Q4. How do we prevent this from happening in Q4? And, uh, and they did, and they planned more aggressively. 
you know, one of our unofficial uh, mottos <laughs> over at Aidfig is plan like nobody's watching. So plan as though money were no object. Okay. Plan to the the best of your ambitions and then adjust as you need. You can always adjust down. You can absolutely always adjust down. And mm -hmm. that's what they did. They um, They planned really aggressively for Q4, planned for, you know, added some sort of I think 30% um, uh, barrier in terms of fulfillment times and uh, amount of stock uh, to to all of their subsequent lines for for the remainder of 2021. And then I will never forget that she emailed me in, I think it was like mid-December. So even before um, everything got everything exploded two weeks later with uh, Boxing Day that so far in Q4, they experienced all five-figure days, all five-figure days in Q4. And that doesn't just happen. You have to be sufficiently stocked. You have to have the capital secured for the marketing pushes that you're going to do. You have to have um, the, the assurance that you're that your hero products are well taken care of, so to speak, so that you can now go out and expand your product portfolio, introduce new products constantly, um, be testing uh, at every turn, um, find efficiencies in your supply chain, whether that means exploring additional manufacturers in parallel, uh, whether that means uh, securing a, a better relationship with a freight forwarder or maybe even air, uh, air shipping some part of goods to ensure that you are never out of stock again. And I think mm -hmm. it'll only take one stock out to ensure that a seller knows very, very well to avoid it in the future. Mm -hmm. um, all of that happens when a seller is sufficiently funded and, uh, you know, they're, they're now happily seven figure sellers uh, and they, when they started with 8fig at uh, early early 2021, I think it was January, they had just barely broken the six figure mark, just barely. Wow, that's like that's you know the dream of of any but any Amazon seller starting out like to have absolutely their first five figure day, let alone <laughs> every day be uh, be five figure and, and and you know you can definitely see how that that helps. Um, so like let let's say somebody yeah. is intrigued you know, by this, like who, who qualifies, who doesn't qualify? Um, you know, is it difficult to qualify? I think one of the most common questions I get, uh, you know, in this space, yeah. you know, not about you guys, cause I don't, I haven't, you know, you're, you're, you're new to my uh, universe here, yeah. but just in general is, is a lot of these companies are, are, uh, us based. And then, so somebody is like, selling in Amazon USA, but they're based in Israel. They're based in Australia. Yeah. They're based in, Uzbekistan, you know, uh, sure. how, can they qualify to, to get help with their uh, uh, Amazon business in the USA without being American, you know, citizens or what, what some of those, uh, some of those things are? Absolutely. So um, as you know, a team that includes a person born in Costa Rica, raised in Israel and Latin America and the US, and then also having uh, teams coinciding both in Tel Aviv and in Austin, Texas, uh, we are very, very proud to offer funding for Amazon sellers worldwide. Um, actually, the couple that I was just telling you about, they are located in Australia. Um, but we have sellers in every country that you named. And then some uh, Amazon sellers, Shopify sellers. Truly, that's part of the greatness of e-commerce is you can have this amazing, successful eight-figure business um, wherever you're sitting on the globe and whatever lifestyle you've chosen for yourself, whatever product and niche you've chosen. In terms of qualifying, uh, so the uh, the number one requirement in order to start out with eight-fig funding, which is, you know, like I said, only part of our service, uh, is uh, three months where you can demonstrate um, sales revenue exceeding $8,000 per month. So basically a run rate of $100,000 a year, but you only have to demonstrate it for the last three months. Um, and for all of the other tools that we offer, planning, forecasting, analytics, um, all that takes is just uh, a store. Have mm -hmm. your store, connect it, start using 8fig to plan. Um, and then once you hit the requirement, by all means, submit your lines. We'll fund them. We'll help you grow. Okay. 
And then for, you know, paying things back, uh, mm -hmm. are you guys like tied to the bank account or tied to my seller central to get, you know, parts of the disbursements or, or how, how is the, the re wait, what's the actual, what's the real word? Remittance? Is that, Remittance, is that yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. How is the, I'm trying, I'm trying to be fancy okay. here now. How do we pay y'all back? You know, it's like, you know, like, okay, you is, <laughs> is, is, I'm trying to say I'm from Texas. Yeah. That's how I would say it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. but how do we do, how do we handle the remittance? Uh, so the remittance, that is quite fancy. Yes. Uh, the remittances are part of the seller's plan. So you, uh, you receive it as uh, an inseparable part of the funding offer. Um, but like I said, that is flexible at any time if you need to make an adjustment. And the way that that's conducted is via ACH. So, you okay. know, pretty simple, seamless. Um, the Amazon Seller Central is connected, but we don't uh, remit funds directly from Amazon Seller Central. Those payouts go to the seller, of course. Um, and then we use the the ACH in order to uh, to remit funds and also to credit funds to the seller. Um, yeah, but the idea is that we connect to your Amazon Seller Central both for obviously initial uh, plan creation, but then also mm -hmm. in order to constantly provide you with analytics about your store and about opportunities in your store. Okay, cool. Now, before we get into how to contact you, you know, there's something we do on this show. We call it the that's the TST 30 second tip. So th this, you know, you don't have to stick to 30 seconds. I'm not going to cut you off or anything, but like a minute or less, like, you know, you talked about some strategies and, and things like that, but what's a, a strategy uh, or a tip? Uh, it can be related to, to your business. It could be related to all of your experience, you know, with supply chain operations it could be about anything at all that you think is unique and valuable and actionable for our listeners that you can say in like 30 seconds to a minute or less. I think from what we've seen, uh, both in the the kickstart of this year, this last Prime Day, which was record shattering, um, and then what we're predicting for Q4 is actually plan like there's like money is no object, <laughs> um, and focus on your top sellers. This is the time to really double down on proven products products that you can grow year over year, where you've honed your supply chain to a work of art. And you know that you can deliver. You know that you can deliver the results that you need year over year. This is probably not a fantastic time to, you know, experiment for the first time with being a multi-channel seller. This is probably not the, first, the best time to uh, jump into a category that you don't know much about. Probably not the best time to get, uh, you know, to jump happy with manufacturers or vendors. But it's a perfect time to double down on what works because we're going to see a lot of sellers who, um, you know, during the pandemic saw it as more of an opportunistic th thing and they weren't really in it for the long haul. But serious sellers, apropos this uh, podcast name, mm -hmm. they're in it for the long haul. They know what works. Do what works. You know better than anyone what works. Speaking of serious sellers, there's going to be a lot of us getting together for some learning and some partying. And I know you guys are going to be uh, a part of it, uh, you know, too, as one of the sponsors of the Sell and Scale Summit. Uh, are you personally going to go there uh, in September in Vegas? Uh, absolutely. If you'll have me. Uh Vegas is a, a place that I, I know quite well, of course, from uh, the, the various Prosper shows and just uh, mm -hmm. personal <laughs> personal visits. So absolutely. Oh my gosh, you said that to... personal visit. <laughs> I had a personal visit to Las Vegas. Yes. I had a personal <laughs> visit to Las Vegas where I was handling remittances for, <laughs> yeah, so I was for the queen. Remittances. Yeah. <laughs> I almost felt like when I was saying remittance, I had to use a British accent for some, for some, for some reason. But, <laughs> but anyways, do you know what's the most important part of the Sell and Scale Summit? Um, it's, a, it's a kind of trick question here, but let's, let's test you out here. The most important part. <laughs> By the way, I have to say, uh, brilliant name, uh, and it's actually a question that we've dealt with quite a lot internally at 8Fig with, uh, you know, the the selling frenzy, I think, that there was. It's kind of slowed down, but uh, how do we, uh, you know, open seller's eyes, emphasize, you've got a gold mine. Why would you sell this? It's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So what's the what's the most important part, Bradley? Can you tell me? It's not the Gary Vee talk. It is day one where I will be leading a Zumba fitness class there for all attendees to, to kind of get the blood flowing. So I will uh, expect that you will uh, pack appropriate clothing if uh, I in had order any to doubt. sweat yourself to death at a 
Zumba fitness class and I'm going to see you there, right? Absolutely. I think in September in Vegas, you're probably going to sweat no matter what you do. Very but, true. Um, I will, I will definitely pack, you know, some, uh, some neon workout gear and I will be there front row. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. All right. Um, now, if, you know, if anybody else out there wants to join that Zuma class or probably the more, you know, let's be real, the more important part is the networking and learning you're going to have. Make sure to go <laughs> to h10.me forward slash S3, h10.me forward slash S3. You can use my $100 off discount code S3BS100, S3BS100, and uh, I will see you in Vegas. Now, people, of course, you know, can wait until September to, to see you, to ask you more questions. But how can they find you on the interwebs out there if they want to hit you guys up to kind of follow up on this conversation that we've been having? Um, absolutely. You can email me directly at Dana, spelled like Dana, D-A-N-A, at 8fig.co. You can also just go directly to 8fig.co, um, start your journey, create your account, uh, we have an awesome CS team who's there to help you if there's anything that you need. And um, yeah, we'll see you around. We'll see you on 8fig. All right. So let me see if I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this a stab here. I'm going to say thank you very much. I'm going to say muchísimas gracias. I'm going to say tolarva. And uh, thank you for coming on here. And I'll be seeing you on the Zumba dance floor in September. Absolutely. And I will say de nada. And I will also say a lo de val. <laughs> And uh, see you in Vegas. I love it. Bye.